The middle cerebellar peduncle is that large circle in the middle. And then the inferior cerebellar peduncle is at the bottom. You can also see it on the brain stem. <clears throat> so this is the middle, that's the superior, and at the bottom is the inferior. Clearly, you can see the superior and the middle. The inferior is really hard to see, so I don't pin that. But I do pin, I can pin the superior and the middle. There, the superior and the middle here. And look for the music note. That's what it looks like. Right. Okay, so next they ask for the cortex. <clears throat> the cortex is just the outer gray matter. Um, the arbor vitae is the white area. So the cortex is the outside. The arbor vitae is inside. That's not very good arbor vitae uh, because the white part, the painting of the white has been... Um, Hopefully one of the other uh, brains have. Do you still have a good opera vitae there? Kingdom? Oh yeah. So you can see the opera vitae there in this model. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the opera vitae, right? The white tree of life. Arbor vitae, right here. Good, thank you. <laughs> Arbor vitae and the outside is the uh, cerebellar uh, cortex. Okay, now they're asking you for the cerebral aqueduct, and I'll show it to you here. From the third ventricle, which is this general area, fluid can flow, CSF. I can flow through. That shut off if you, if you want to. Okay. Um, into the fourth ventricle. So that's the cerebral aqueduct. That's Next is the uh, right and left cerebral hemispheres. Hope you know your right from your left. <laughs> and next after that is the cerebral peduncle. Now this is where a lot of students get confused. You can't see it here, but you can see them here. So if you look at the midbrain, that's the very first part of the brain stem, you should see these tracks going up and down. Okay. That's a cerebral peduncle. Peduncle is a track. Do you see it there? Oh yeah. Nicely. Oh wow, this is very nicely done here. See? You can, you can see it. Okay. So that's very nicely done here. Geniculate bodies are right here too. These are the geniculate bodies. Remember when we talked about the optic disc and the optic radiation, right? Um, here you can see medial and lateral. Which one would be medial? The one in the middle. The one in the middle. That was too easy. <laughs> that was medial and lateral is 103. The numbers rubbed off on this one. But the one lateral is the lateral geniculate body and that's the medial. Very nice. This is a good brain. It's harder to see on these because you kind of just have to look for, um, I'll just pin it on there. It's easier over there. Okay, let's see what's next. What is next? Oh, the choroid plexuses. So you remember that in the ventricle model, the choroid plexuses are in pink. Here, though, I like them better because you really see the blood vessels. Right. So that's the choroid plexus for the lateral ventricle. Right. And this is the choroid plexus for the third ventricle. Question? Uh, that one may not have it. So all the brains have something else. So it would be, the third would be right here, and the lateral would be on the other side. Because it, it just doesn't happen. Yeah, okay, this one has it. No, actually it's a good one. Okay, let's, let's go on. So this is why I use all the models. So to identify specific structures, 
Some are good on one model, some are good on another model. A simulated gyrus. Anyone know where the simulated gyrus is? You look for the corpus callosum, and the first ridge above the corpus callosum is the simulated gyrus. And the colored grain is colored orange. Yeah. All right, all of this, simulated gyrus. This is the corpus callosum. Next, you have corona radiata. And again, you need one of these models because the insula has been removed so that you can see the corona, crown, radiates, right? And you can see the striations there. So that's the corona radiata. That's the lentiform nucleus. That's the caudate nucleus. Corpora quagemina means four bodies. On this model, you can see, if you put the brain stem together, you can see the four bumps. On top is your superior colliculus. On the bottom is the inferior colliculus. Plural would be colliculi. So superior and inferior. See, this model doesn't show it as well. It just kind of shows these two ridges. Right. Um, I showed you the corpus callosum. What about the cranial nerve? Has everybody identified all the cranial nerves? The big brain is not good for the cranial nerves. Sorry. Mm -hmm. The big brain. The nice pretty ones. This is the best brain for the cranial nerve. So cranial nerve one is in the olfact, uh, sorry, in the frontal lobe. So you would actually have to see the frontal lobe before you could see cranial nerve one, right? That's cranial nerve one. Cranial nerve one. The optic nerve, cranial nerve two, you can see it here. That's the optic chiasma. Below that, medial is cranial nerve three. So that white line right there is cranial nerve three. It's numbered 64 on this model. The trochlear nerve, cranial nerve 4, is lateral. And this one is numbered 65. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then this big bump in, right here by the pons is what? 5. And that's trigeminal. Yeah, this one right here. And then you go medial again, and that's 6. Six, so there's five, six, seven, eight, nine, that's ten, this is eleven, and that's twelve. Those are the cranial nerves. Those are the cranial nerves. It, you have to identify all of them. If you have problems, and I know it's kind of hard because some of the white, because they painted them white on this model, uh, and some of the paint's rubbed off, come and ask me. Bring me a brain stem and I will walk you through it. This round body though right here is not a cranial nerve. Does anybody know what that body is called? Right there. That's a mammillary body. The hmm? bump. The diencephalon. What does the di diencephalon contain? Hypothalamus and thalamus. So here, you can see the epithalamus that ends in the penile gland. You can see the thalamus. You can see the intermediate mass of the thalamus. This is the hypothalamus, all this area. That's the optic chiasma. And here again, you can see the cerebral aqueduct going to the fourth ventricle. Okay, so let's see what else. The longitudinal fissure, that's easy, right? You put your two brains together, and if I were to put um, how would I label it? If I, if I were to put a stick right here, what would you say? Longitudinal fissure. Any stick. Anytime I put a stick, it's for an opening or a groove. That's a longitudinal fissure. So then what is this fissure called? Transverse fissure. Transverse fissure. 
Then we have the fornix. You understand that the fornix is the white matter right below the corpus callosum. And this one is colored orange, though. That's the corpus callosum. That's the fornix. Yeah, yeah, it's number 45. Somebody's been studying. Corpus callosum, fornix. What's this that's numbered 44? Septum pellucidum. And here, that's a septum pellucidum. It's labeled 54. What is this, by the way? What's these blood vessels here? Yeah, it's a choroid plexus. That's a lateral ventricle, and it's showing you the, the choroid plexus here. Okay, what else? I showed you the medial and lateral geniculate bodies. Gyri, of course, are the ridges, all the ridges. Soft line are the grooves. The hippocampus comes inside. I don't think I ever really found a good model for this. The hippocampus. Where is the hippocampus? Anyone find it? Yeah, it's inside. So I've never. Oh, here. Here we go. There's the hippocampus. Right there. The hippocampus. It's inside. So if you had the temporal lobe, you could see the hippocampus coming through there. Just this general area. Everyone see that? That's hippocampus. Here you can't see it because the choroid plexus is on top of it. Okay, next. I'm surprised. Oh, you can't see it from the side. So the hippocampus is inside this area. And the only one that really shows it well is this one. You can see the bump. Um, how about the hypothalamus? We already showed you that, right? Interventricular foramina. Where can I pin the interventricular foramina? Vagant for what? Top her finger. Everyone, <laughs> go and get a stick. Actually, the best place, sorry, the best place to see is in the ventricle model. Okay? You can see it better here. You're right, you were right, but you can really see in detail that there's an opening here. Lab CSF flows through from here through here to the third bed. It's this. And here you can see the choroid plexus, right for each of the ventricles. Okay, let's see what's next. I want to do this quickly so you have time to look at the model. Um, lobes, you have actually five lobes. You have the frontal, the parietal, the temporal, the occipital, but this is also a lobe where it comes in. That's the insula. The medulla I showed you. The pyramids of the medulla is this area here. This is the medulla, and this is where crossing over occurs. Oh, I think this white one. Yeah, it has a line on it. Yeah, very nice. So there's the decussation of the pyramids where they cross. Everyone, everyone can see that. Everyone has found that. Um, olives. Remember the very inferior olivary nucleus. They're just showing you a bump here, but some of them are color coded. Here's pink, and it's number 25. That's pink there. And then 
Midbrain, we already showed you penile. Pituitary gland. Has anyone found the pituitary gland in any of the models? Where? What model? Oh, yeah. It's hanging off of it, huh? Where was it? Number 115. That's not very well depicted, but that's the pituitary gland. That's the optic nerve, that's the optic chiasma. Okay? Optic chiasma, pituitary gland. And the ventricles, everyone knows the ventricles. You have two lateral, one third, and one fourth ventricle. And here's showing you the cerebral aqueduct, which I showed you earlier in the other models. The spinal cord, is there any question on the spinal cord? Has everyone found the denticulate ligaments? No. Can you turn around and pull out that um, fish vertebrae above the wood? You can just slide it right up, right by your hand. Yeah. There's a sandwich. Make sure you look at all the models, guys. I use them all. So this is the spinal cord, right? This is the anterior view. This is the posterior <coughs> view. The pia mater, the extension of the pia mater is called the denticulate ligaments right there. That's the denticulate ligament. Okay? Can you show us? Yeah, the other thing that students have trouble finding is the rami communicants. It's depicted better in the other model without the bone. And the sympathetic trunk. That's the anterior ramus of a spinal nerve. That's the posterior ramus. There's the dorsal root ganglia. There's the dorsal root. And there's the ventral root. Okay? Any problems on the spinal cord? Anything, any structure you guys could not find? Yeah, the film terminal. Oh, the film terminal, we don't have that structure. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> so you won't ask that question? Can't, can't pin it. I don't have any structure. Anything else? Okay, so let's go on. Yeah, it's right here. A sympathetic trunk for a chain. Also known as the parabatebral, right? What number is that? It's 22 on this side, 22. I think this is the only one that shows that. I don't know if the flat mat really shows the... Uh, is there anything else? That's a sympathetic chain, no? Uh, what about the subarachnoid space? The subarachnoid space? So if the pia mater is the innermost layer, and the dura mater is the outermost layer. Then the one in the middle that my stick is on is the arachnoid mater. And the space below it, where my stick now is sitting in, is the subarachnoid space. Oh, okay. Does that have a number? Uh, I don't think it, I don't know. They have all kinds of numbers, but I don't know what the numbers correspond to. Yeah. Okay, the eye and the ear are pretty easy. The cochlea is really easy. Um, and I think I have a key for it. And we haven't got to it yet, but it's that big flat plate. Eye and ear and the cochlea, you can look at your book, and I do have some keys, okay? Uh, the plexus and the human nerves, the flat man. Everyone knows how to read the flat man, right? Everyone can see all the structures on the flat man. Now the spinal nerves, I already outlined them for you. But a few things that I may, you may not have noticed is this has the conus medullaris. Remember that the flat man and uh, flat man, the spinal cord ends in the cone. There's that cone. That's the conus medullaris. So the white tip is the end of the spinal cord and it's called the conus medullaris. So what are these tail-like structures extending from the conus medullaris? What is that called? 
What is it called? Cauda iguana. And that's the coccygeal uh, cranial nerve. Sorry, spinal nerve. I can't believe I said cranial nerve. Any other questions? Any questions on the uh, flat man? Okay, on the neuron. Any questions on the neuron or the synapse? Because that you have that key with uh, Margaret Steinberg, except that we differ in one thing. Can you bring out the neuron? And that's the nasal body. She calls them the mitochondria, but. <laughs> so remember that the nasal body. Did I break it? No, I think it just came off. Yeah. Remember that the nasal bodies are clusters of rough ER and ribosomes. So these red structures are the nasal bodies. She may put mitochondria in hers, but it's not. These are the nasal bodies. What <laughs> This is the nasal body. There's another one somewhere here. That's the beginning of the axon. That's the axon. These are the neural fibers. Okay, so you guys see that? These are the nasal bodies. These are the axon hillock with the neural fibers. The mitochondria you can see in the axon. It looks like a typical mitochondria. Oh. Right? This is the mitochondria. Yeah. Right. It looks regular. What is this gray stuff? Endoneuria. What's this outside layer here called? Neurolemma. What's that? Nucleus, Nucleus of Schwann of what? cell. Schwann cell. What is that? That's the axon. That's the axon. What are these layers inside? Myon sheath. Myon sheath. What are these indentions here? Yeah. Nodes of Ramonier. Nodes of Ramonier. Wow, you guys got it. Okay. I think that's it, guys. If you have any questions, you may come and ask me. From this point on, it's